welcome my friends to the sixth and final part of Bloodborne the Old Hunters. So today we'll be facing Lawrence the First Vicar. Uh, he will be the fifth and final boss for the DLC. Um, and I believe I missed like one or two things in the fishing hamlet. So we'll be returning there. Um, and then that will be it. We'll be wrapping up the series. And right at the very end, I'll discuss some of the lore that the DLC kind of points at. Um, I don't know everything myself, just like the tidbits that I've kind of like looked at and like read. Um, and yeah, this DLC was actually really cool because the bosses were fantastic. You get a shit ton of awesome, sick, unique weapons, and uh, the amount of lore it adds to the base story is actually quite, uh, quite hefty. So. Let's go ahead and head over and see what Lawrence is all about. Uh, pretty excited. Said uh, Lawrence is a pretty tough enemy. I'm expecting to die several times on this one at least. The final boss. As far as um, like boss types go, we've already fought two cleric beasts in the base game, so it should be interesting. Want to see how they make this one kind of different? First one being, of course, just the base cleric beast, and then the second one being Vicar Amelia. Since this is the last video, I'm gonna wrap it up. I gotta say, I'm pretty. I was pretty impressed with the DLC. It was very well made, and um, a lot of unique bosses, and actually jam-packed with really cool, unique weapons. So that was really cool. I think. Like a lot of the weapons in the DLC were probably like my faves. Fireballs going down. Okay. I know there's more hunters down there, but you guys already saw me kill them in the first video, so. Let's keep it stepping. Um, but yeah, there was a lot of like interconnected lore as well, uh, like in research hall and other places, um, and like all the lore from the weapons and the new sets that we get. It was really cool. Bloodborne by far is like a really interesting game in that it's like really unique. Um, I haven't played Dark Souls, any of the Dark Souls, but uh, I think this was a really cool like footing into his world. I don't know if I will ever play the Dark Souls, but I'm going to play Sekiro Shadows Die twice for sure, so I'm kind of interested to see how he'll take uh, all those Japanese um, myths and legends into account. Alright, so there he is, Lawrence, the first vicar. Pretty excited. Let's go ahead and get it done.
Crazy. He's on fire. to the like orphan of cost and lady maria timing right now this delay timing is fucking me up okay this guy's fucking swole hmm so i think I'm just wondering if I might need to change my uh, set. Hmm. And I noticed he does like a ton of fire damage. So if we die like two or three more times, I think I'll just have to swap over to a fire immune set. I'm just gonna run past all these guys, cause um, there's no point I feel. Try to stay behind him. His viscers aren't working that well.
ridiculous. reaches <laughs> cuz it's one thing mm. his second form has a lot of like he has protection in the front and the back so it's kind of hard to really just thinking about how to deal with that form. Because the first form is fine. We could just stand behind them and it's... Cheese fest. But the second form. Maybe I should equip some sort of fire garment. If I die again, I'll equip a fire garment. Because that lava is... Still... Come out. You turd. All right, Lawrence. Heal, boy. Oops. <laughs> right, I'm in this one. Ah, that was dumb. That's an absolute waste, fam. Yeah, here we go. 
go. Oh no, he got me. I'm on fire. Wow. He's gonna speed for the fire. Fire in the back is really annoying. Ow. Who is oozing? Ow, I think that was coming too. Ow, that was good. Oops, dodged the wrong way. That'll do it. That'll get you. Ah oh, man, we really shouldn't be standing behind him, but it's like, honestly, not much else to stand. Here, let's uh, waste the health pot for this. Let's see if we can just wrap it up in one go. Ah. Okay. Okay, buddy. <laughs> I wonder what... Is it a rune? Yeah, right, it was, right. Beasts embrace. After repeated experiments in controlling the scourge of beasts, the gentle embrace rune was discovered. When its implementation failed, the embrace became a forbidden rune, but this knowledge became a foundation of the healing church. Those who swear this oath take on a ghastly form and enjoy accentuated transformation effects, especially while wielding a beast weapon. Interesting. Um, hmm. Controlling the scourge of beasts. Kind of go back into that when I talk about the lore later. Alright, so let's go ahead and this must be my other blood echoes. Grab this real quick. Alright, um So Lawrence was actually pretty rough. <laughs> actually the hardest bloodborne boss I would say. <laughs> For me at least. Because the fire was just annoying. I think I could have handled it better in my like first run, but um, I don't know. The Lady Maria fight and the Orphan of Cost fight are probably my favorites, but they kind of conditioned me to be expecting like faster attacks. The timing, you know, they kind of set you up, and then you go to Lawrence, and it's like way different timing. But um, that's what kind of threw me off. Alright, so we are pretty much done with the DLC. Like I said, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to, um, I need to equip a certain rune and we'll talk, go back to the fishing hamlet to equip, to obtain an item from an NPC. And then we will end the series back at the Orphan of Koss Arena because that's where we have to end the Hunter's Nightmare. So I will see you in the fishing hamlet in just a sec. Actually thinking about it, I just teleported to the wrong place. Should have just teleported to the fish actual fishing hamlet. <laughs> but um <laughs> the reason I look like this is because uh, I equipped the milkweed rune, which is uh 
go ahead and read it one more time, but we actually obtained it in the DLC, if you guys remember. A carol rune envisioned by Adeline, patient at the research hall, a transcription of the inhuman sticky whispers that reveal the nature of a celestial attendant. Those who take this oath become a lumen wood that peers toward the sky, feeding phantasms in its luscious bed. Phantasms guide us and lead us to further discoveries. So if you have this on, you have a higher chance of gaining items and uh, stuff like that. But apparently for this little bit, we'll need this equipped in order for the NPC combo to trigger. There he is. Yo, fam. Back in land. Blasphemous, murderous, blood crazed fiends. Atonement for the wretches. By the wrath of Mother Koss. We'll just listen to this real quick again, because I'm going to wrap it up and talk Mercy. about this actually. For the poor was a child. Mercy. Oh, please. Alright, so this guy talks about Bergenworth and the sins and Mother Koss and all that. Um, let's go ahead and talk to him real quick. Mercy, mercy. Curse here. Curse there. A curse for he and she. Why care? A bottomless curse. A bottomless sea. Source of all greatness. All things that be. Listen for the baneful chance. Weep with them as one in trance. And weep with us. Oh. Weep with us. Alright, the accursed brew. So, let me go ahead and let's check this out. I think it's here, actually. Here it is. The accursed brew. Skull of a local from the oh, skull of a local from the fi violated fishing village. The inside of the skull was forcibly searched for eyes, as evidenced by innumerable scratches and indentations. No wonder the skull became stewed in curses. They who offer baneful chants weep with them as one in trance. Um. So. I'm gonna go disequip this rune and then we'll go back to the Orphan of Kos and then we'll discuss what we just heard and read there. And uh, just to let you guys check this out, but this is the Beast... Um, what was it called? <laughs> the Beast Embrace, yeah. Uh, that we just got from Lawrence. So this is what it changes you into. It changes you into the Beast form. And I forget if the Beast Pellets give you any kind of extra buff. I think they do while you're in this form. Um, and then there's also like a beast garb that you can equip, but this is pretty sick, I must say, the beast form. Uh, I would definitely try this out if I was going on another run through Bloodborne, uh, along with the bow blade. But go ahead and re-equip our hunter rune and head over to the Orphan of Kos. So this is the end of the old hunters. I will be enacting the final cutscene here in just a second. But before we do that, um, just some things I would like to discuss about the lore of Bloodborne. Um, so if if you don't know any of the Bloodborne and you only know like the DLC that you know if you only seen the DLC, then it's kind of hard to kind of understand. But um, the Healing Church is the power figure in the Bloodborne um, game and they kind of experiment with blood and all that and it's kind of hinted that or said that the onset of the curse of beasts and how it is bloodborne you know through people's infected blood uh, started from the healing church and what I wanted to discuss is um, all of the church members became disfigured and became beasts except for Master Wilhelm because he was on the search for eyes but even he kind of got mutated later um, as he was trying to become an ascended one um, so there are like great ones 
which are you know beings that aren't human obviously and there's stuff like this this is the mother Koss. Um let's see if oh I don't actually have any more great ones wisdoms I blew them all <laughs> um, but throughout the game if you notice we collect items called uh, great ones wisdoms and that gives you insight and basically uh, the insight is basically I think what they mean by eyes on the inside it's kind of why people or the great church uh, look through people's skulls because they're trying to gain that insight um, I only have 28 right now but I burned them all on like blood rocks and stuff so originally you have like you can have up to like you know 200 or like 300 insight I think and the more insight you have the more you kinda gain like hidden insights into this world but uh, anyways the secret uh, the whole point of this DLC is that there is a secret um, and as you went through the game there was like the hunter Simon and the church assassin Brador who tried to stop you or Simon helped you but Brader ends up killing him because he helps you and stuff. Um, and they're trying to cover this secret. And all the hunters who are curious and try to uncover the secret of the fishing hamlet and the healing church, um, you know, they ev eventually they get sent to that underground dungeon, if you guys remember. Um, to and they're left there to rot, which is kind of evil, <laughs> obviously. But uh. It's really interesting because once we get here, this is the secret that they were trying to protect, right? The fishing hamlet, um, and even Maria and Ludwig and all them were trying to stop us from getting there, the first hunters. Um, if we go back to this item and we read it one more time, the skull of a local for, uh, skull of a local from the violated fishing village. The inside of the skull was forcibly searched for eyes, as evidenced by innumerable scratches and indentations. So, the first hunters, such as Lady Maria, and you know they were sent here. I don't know who and all of who and all of them were, but Lady Maria was definitely like part of them. And they came here and they killed the, they slaughtered the whole fishing village, right? And they like, freaking dug through their skulls looking for more insights, which is pretty <laughs> messed up. Uh, I think as a result of that, if you read the Rakuyo inscription at the very bottom here. Lady Muria was not fond of this aspect of the Rakuyo as she frowned upon blood blades despite being a distant relative of the queen or here. But one day she abandoned her beloved Rakuyo, casting it into a dark well when she could stomach its presence no longer. And I think people are speculating that after they slaughtered the fishing hamlet, you know, she was kind of disgusted by herself and, you know, the the greed and the extents that the healing church will go to and so she chucked her weapon into the well which is the one that we find um, from those two beasts and as far as the nightmare goes they say let me see here there's an item um, maybe I put it away in my stash <laughs> I did. Let me just check my inventory real quick. Oh no, here it is. The Eye of the Blood Drunk Hunter. You need this item to enter the Hunter's Nightmare, basically, the DLC. The Eye of a Blood Drunk Hunter, its pupil is collapsed and turned to mush, indicating the onset of the scourge of beasts. A hunter who goes drunk with blood is said to be taken by the nightmare, destined to wander forever, engaged in an endless hunt. It is a fate that no hunter can escape. So, um, in the actual Bloodborne game, when you fight hunters who, like, you know, they lose their mind and they become beasts themselves, you kill them, and I think what happens is, after they die, they come here to the Hunter's Nightmare. Or if, you know, if you lose your mind, then you come to the Hunter's Nightmares regardless. So when we came here there's a bunch of hunters wandering around that we killed you know like NPC hunters um, and those you know they've all met their fate of being here uh, but that's like a curse apparently so 
here we see mother costs and once more if we read the cost parasite lore the carcass of Kos washed up on the coast. Its insides were teeming with tiny parasites, unlike any found in humans. This atypical weapon can only be clasped tight and swung. Uh, but a Kos parasite is said to stimulate phantasms inhabiting a lumen wood. So, I think it's... Because people are saying that the church killed Mother Kos, this cosmic entity. Um, but it said it its carcass washed up on shore, so I think it was already dead. What happened was, um, it washed up here, and then it was pregnant though, and that's the orphan of cost that we kill, right? But what happened is that orphan of cost I don't think is the actual orphan. Um, if you look at my thumbnail for part one of this series. Uh, that's a picture from Research Hall. If you guys remember, there were three statues um, huddled around a shrine of a little baby, and the baby wasn't human, obviously. It looked like some sort of celestial being. And we put a switch into the brain, and that activates you know, the elevator. But um, what it is, is, or the theory is, is that you know the healing church members are obviously the ones huddled around the baby as indicated by if you go into like your clothing they're all wearing these um, these gloves like these surgical long gloves um, white surgical gloves the intricate embroidery weaves a spell that protects it where the church engages in the hunt in a medical capacity when cancer is discovered one must pinpoint its location um, and then there's more descriptions on the you know actual church garb but so they're saying that the church came here, they slaughtered all the inhabitants for the insight, right? They're harvesting that. Um, and they came here and they found this corpse, which was kind of being worshipped in a sense by the village, I think. Um, you can see all those people or beings over there who are, remember, in the hallway worshipping this thing. Um, but what they did, I think, was they took that baby they took the orphan and they experimented on it and after that child died its essence came here into the hunter's nightmare um, and the hunter's nightmare is in a sense a curse as you heard the dude who was wobbling around and he gave us that skull that we just obtained he was talking about you know curse the fiend's children and their children's children forevermore the fiends are the the church and the first hunters and their children's children are obviously their descendants so they're all put in a curse and they're forced to come here into the hunter's nightmare um, because of what they did to mother's Koss's offspring and there's like another theory I think where people are saying that mother Koss's children as well are cursed because of this but yeah I mean everything really makes sense because the church came here and then they took the orphan, they experimented on it, they took the blood of Mother Koss and the orphan and they used that to experiment on their own people as evidence points to in research hall. And uh, yeah, so everything just stems from the old church. Um, so that was like actually a pretty crazy lore uh, that I like was, you know, trying to discover and like reading about and whatnot. So. The DLC, the Old Hunters DLC, ties really well into the Bloodborne thing. I think that's really cool. Sometimes in other games, I found that DLC is just kind of random, and it's you know just an extra story. It doesn't really pertain much to the. It's not really pertinent to the main lore, but in this case, it like it really kind of gives you an inside eye to it, which is really cool. Um, yeah. So and there's like a bunch more stuff. I was like tied into Rom the Vacuous Spider and uh, the daughter of Ebriidus, which is another cosmic entity, uh, being of Kos or a great one. So um, yeah, I mean, if you guys are into Bloodborne, or if you guys like this, I suggest you guys <laughs> watch someone else's walkthrough of Bloodborne, or just you know look up the lore. It's pretty dope. But let's go ahead and end this. It was a great series. Um. I'm really glad I decided to buy this DLC. 20 bucks wasn't bad for all the bosses, the dope bosses and the dope loot that you can obtain.
sweet child of Kos, returns to the ocean. A bottomless curse, a bottomless sea, accepting of all that there is and can be. All right. So what that is about is, I, so as you can see, the nightmares kind of ended. The blood sun is gone, but I think how they say it's a bottomless curse. I think the hunters, you know, the fiends are still cursed. But uh, what they mean by that is, the orphan, like I said, in turn, its essence, its soul was kind of trapped here after they experimented on and killed it. And what we did was just kind of free its essence finally. You know, and it's kind of sad, but <laughs> I think that's what the lore means. It's all open for interpretation, I guess. Um, that is the end of Bloodborne, the old hunters. Thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs> I don't know what uh, game will be next on this channel. Either I still have like some side games that I might try out, or um, it might just we might just wait for Sekiro to drop. Um, it drops on the 22nd, I believe, of March, but I might pick it up like a week or two after that. But I'll be playing it relatively soon if you guys want to check that out. And yeah, as always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys for the next game. <laughs> Peace.